Uh, so thanks everyone. Seriously, I was not like expecting so much people in the room. Uh, I'm glad that everyone is still alive after the CD app. Uh, by the way, if you need something, don't be ashamed to come up from me and take something. Uh, I got like a full box there. I need to, you know, give away everything. So uh, just feel free to come there. Um, I will start the talk with something that probably, I don't know if there's somebody in the room that already know about my content or already see something about the subject. Um, oh, it's cool to see that everyone needs some free merch. Let's bring some more. <laughs> I like it this way. Okay. Oh. So cool. I guess this is it. Everything will be gone soon. So, there you go. So, if you, everyone is fine. So, let's start this. Uh, I mean, okay, everyone is ready. Oh, I can start with talking about hacking a game and all the things interesting about it. Seriously, um, the subject was something I discovered like almost 10 years ago. Because, uh, you know, as a kid, it was a, like really interesting for me to play a video game at all. And what's interesting about the subject would be by, you know, introducing myself first. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm working actually at Sukuri. Um, I did the Corlin training to help me understand about, you know, all the reverse engineering stuff and how about uh, my OS was working. I mean, if you're working on Windows to hack a game or to understand uh, how to load the library and, you know, all the content needed to go um, deep level to be able, like, to control your game from the, like, the beginning of the game. Uh, yeah, you need to learn about reverse engineering. That's bad because that was like a big step for me. I was kind of happy about it. And for the rest, well, if you did the CDF last night, I was in Team IH Security. And uh, I'm also working with Brute Logic for the one in the room who knows him. Uh, this guy is like the guy who told me everything about web security. So, well, he was pretty happy to give me his logo for my conference. And if you need to find me on Facebook or well, it's not there, <laughs> but if you need my mail, everything is there. So let's begin the story. I will begin from the beginning. I mean, as a kid, like from the script kitty from now, where you know how to act a game completely and uh, how it works. I mean, it's not like one-on-one anymore. It's like just for the beginning of the, the talk. But uh, the first interesting slide about it is I will talk a bit about IoT. If you like to talk about it, seriously, it's cool. Because um, my first experience wasn't really about hacking stuff. It was more hardware hacking. I don't know in the room if somebody already did it or something just to take your Xbox, open it up, and start messing with uh, the hardware, install a new OS, and you know, it's like computer already, so you can do pretty much everything you want. It's just like a bit harder than playing on Windows. Um, but uh, what's really funny, uh, I don't know if anyone remember, like I don't, I don't remember if it was last year or two years ago, um, I seen something really funny in the news. I mean, uh, the PlayStation Network was down. Xbox Live was down because of kids playing with DDoS. I mean, was it funny really? Uh, I don't know. Seriously, I was not caring at the moment. I was playing on PC, so, you know, <laughs> it's not really my case. But, uh, I mean, all the points there were that it was possible, actually, to do more than a DDoS. I was, like, just expecting more from them. I was just, oh, that's it. But at least they did something. And uh, it's kind of funny because everyone, and I'm not sure about everyone in the room, but uh, I've seen some so many, uh, I should say, like, I've seen, I've seen much more than uh, just hacking a game. I've seen people getting hacked, uh, like hacking your credit card or whatsoever. I've seen spam into game. 
I've seen like a remote code execution. I've seen so many stuff uh, that nobody really cares when it comes to hacking a game because, well, it's just a game. Uh, I don't know why, actually. But uh, feel free to bring me a boost. I need a boost right now. <laughs> to survive. Uh, I mean, the CDF last night was really rough. Uh, but yeah, talking about you know uh, gaming on Xbox or PlayStation or whatsoever you're using, um, that was pretty cool to take a look at the hard drive because uh, almost everything you want to find out about, um, I mean, your console or whatsoever you're using to game uh, is probably on your hard drive already, and you can just mess with it. I mean, it's cool. So it brings us like to the first demo already, which is the part where nobody really think it was possible, but actually it was. It was really old. I mean, it's old stuff. Uh, if you got a chance to play this game, uh, you will remember a few things from there, and you will see already impossible stuff I made uh, from modding on Xbox. I mean, on PC it was not like a big deal, but playing on Xbox and being like able to spawn this kind of vehicle online and mess with players and just make them afraid of you was kind of cool story, I mean. But that's probably like the kind of fame that the script kitty wants to have because it was like pretty mainstream to take the stuff from PC gaming and put it to Xbox. So it was just a matter of opening it up and find it on the R drive. So, I mean, it's kind of... Well, it's pretty simple at this point. Uh, I was expecting like more from it, but at least it was working. For a kid of like 14 years old, well, it was pretty, pretty cool. Actually, I was able to do pretty much everything I wanted to do. And for the next one, it's pretty much obvious that uh, Photoshop was needed for this one. And well, the game wasn't looking this way at first. <laughs> And everything was messed up because I just decided to show off how it could be possible. I mean, to do everything impossible using a game on Xbox. Because people were like saying that playing on Xbox was safe and it was impossible to hack a game and do whatsoever you want. And I mean, in this case, I was like able to spawn anything and play with every function from the game. Well, really easily, like spawning clowns and, you know, shooting with two rifles at the same time, well, and doing, like, being invincible and all the stuff. But, well, at this point, I, I don't know if it was really interesting. I mean, it was just to show off something and to, have it, to be in a mood, like, to say, yeah, I did something, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm a kid with superpower, you know. Uh, yeah, that was my kind of stuff at the time. But, uh, well, I should say that it was, like, meaning nothing. Because oh, <laughs> when I discovered the rest of the story, I mean, about hacking a game, well, I mean, I don't know if there's somebody from Microsoft in the room, but kids, please don't do this at home. Because uh, Microsoft actually banned me from everything. I mean, uh, my, my console were <laughs> screwed up by them. Uh, I got no more access to my account. Everything got locked down. I mean, I got a really good surprise as a kid. Well... I guess it wasn't that much a good idea to do it, and I don't know, seriously. I was like the kind of kid that wanted to try something. I found out a lot of stuff, a lot of interesting stuff that cost money. <laughs> that was the, you know, the bad part about it. And from the first point, when we are talking about engineering in general, well, that's cool. I don't know if there's any reverse engineers in the room that know all this stuff. But I'm just talking about a script kitty tools found on the internet, easy to find. And well, this tool is actually like the goal of any guy that wants to, uh, you know, hack a game because it's actually pretty cool. I mean, it's doing the reverse engineering for you. It's even giving you information about every offset you need. It's also smart enough to tell you, hey, the pointer to this class is probably there. I mean. They are doing everything for you. You just need to learn how to use the tool. So, in fact, how easy was it for a script kitty to learn it? I don't know. Pretty easy. But another thing that I found out during 
uh, this period of my life was, well, that's cool. There's player profile and memory. I found out a lot of stuff, I mean, related to the game. You, I mean, normally, a game is saving everything inside a file encrypted, so you cannot really guess how it was encoded at first. But I just found out that in memory, it was possible to find your full save game, all your stats, all your information. And, well, in some cases, it was really messy because you can find uh, information about things that shouldn't be there, like server's information, IP from the other players in the game, and things that you don't really want to give to anyone. I mean, in some cases, it was able to send a payload directly to another player. I mean, who would have thought that it would have been possible to do it? I mean, probably nobody. Because uh, it's not something that um, the engineer will think about it when you make a game. I mean, when you're creating a game, you just want to have something to play. You don't want to like make sure it's secure like a web server or whatsoever. I mean, the first target is to have something to test. I mean, you, you just want to take your controller and try it. That's, that's the first step. So, well, that was pretty cool to learn how to dig into memory and to find back uh, all the classes and all the stuff. And if there's some like central player in the room, you probably notice uh, this picture. It's pretty funny because, well, they forgot about this. I mean, it was possible at the time to do pretty much everything with those kind of game. I mean, would the room already play GTA without hacking or cheating? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably the first thing you do when you buy this game. So. I decided to build something about it, like to start thinking about how uh, the game is working. I mean, w when you're building a game, uh, there's always like a state machine running in background. Like uh, when you're in the menu, there's some stuff going in background, updating uh, memory to say, okay, we're waiting the signal to start the game. So when the game begins, it's taking everything in memories, like your profile, your statistic, and all your information about your character and all the stuff, and it loads everything into the game states. So it's pretty obvious that all the data that you have, like, already in memory, that you can do pretty much everything you want with it, like, I mean, writing into memory and reading, it's not a problem when you're root or whatsoever. It's like, yeah, just have fun with memory. So at some point, I just like started to figure out that memory injection was possible, and it was also possible at the end of the game because uh, I mean during the game or when the game is paused, there's nothing happening really. Uh, I mean it's only at the end of the game that your game will send like the payload to the server to say, "Hey, just update my stats. The game is over. Uh, I've got like so many XP, so I'm now level max in a game or whatsoever." It was all possible to do, like, kind of easy stuff. But um, the next step was quite more interesting because, um, well, uh, when it comes to the network, it's pretty much obvious that the client memory is flushing everything directly to the server memory. And funny thing about it, it's the fact that it's often taking your memory not only uh, to update the server memory, but also to send it back to other clients. So it was possible at some point to inject stuff directly in memory to flush it directly to the server. But uh, I've seen some guys working on project to directly inject into the network. The guys were taking a look uh, to the encryption of the game, sending the stuff directly from the client to the server. And the thing is that a game is refreshing so often by design, it's like kind of broken because uh, they cannot encrypt with something uh, that takes a long, uh, a long drive to decrypt on the server side because it, it would need like too much power to be able to decode everything live and, and keep like 60 frames per second for a player. So, and pretty much every case it's possible to inject from memory and from the network if you want so. But uh, personally, oh, oh, I love you. <laughs> Can you leave the bottle? <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> ah, 
That's still cool. Yeah, ask you to bring that. Oh, for real? Oh. I never seen no through boobs. Thank you. <laughs> you need one too. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Mm. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I would be in a good mood for the rest of the talk. <laughs> Thank you. Well, to continue the story about data, well, I found out something interesting. At this point, I was able to say that a client would receive update from the server. But, uh, What's funny, it's the fact that on, you know, on a web server, when you talk about PHP vulnerabilities or whatsoever, uh, you're always like expecting to have SQL injection, you're always like expecting to have like remote code execution or XSS, but are you really thinking that the guy on a game would try to modify memory to send you a payload on your server, updating directly the database every cycle, updating like the game data, which means the data for everyone in the game, not only your instance of the game. So every time, whoa, that wasn't expected. Well, every time the games update, you can send a new payload and do whatsoever you want with not only, only your game, but you can obviously mess with everyone in the room or on the server. So that's kind of pretty interesting, but you just need to think about a concept behind building a game. So what about being super rich online and chilling with an alien? Well, people don't really care, I think. So <laughs> it was just really obvious that GTA 5 was kind of funny for hacking. I mean, if you already got the chance to play the game, you will see anything impossible in this game. And no play. I, I mean, I don't believe that anyone is playing this game legit. The first thing you, you want to do is to become really rich without any work. I mean, <laughs> screwed up. And I just don't want to have some easy money and use a cheat if I can't. So all those things lead me to something really interesting. I don't know how much people in the room who know how to code C++ or know how to code like really uh, low level stuff, but there's something interesting to know about coding. When you're coding something, there's always, uh, a display in memory that looks like this exactly. So uh, as, ex as example, if I have like, uh, in this case, I've got eight players in array. Well, this array will be the same in memory. I mean, uh, the first pointers to the first person will be there and there will be like a space over the size of the object between each side. So it's pretty obvious that once you got like the pointers to the array, it's well done. And that's pretty much the first step to learn how to use reclass and other scripted tools that leads bit to reverse engineering in general, which was pretty cool because it was allowing me to use pointers directly in memory for a process and say, hey, I've got like a structure. I don't know what it is. I just can play with it live and I can just put title on it like, oh, this is my life. This is the title of the object. This is like my position uh, on X and Y. And, you know, I can just put uh, the data type like int, float, and D word, which is pretty straightforward for somebody doing reverse engineering. So at this point, uh, it leads to something more interesting. I mean, really getting into coding a bot or coding an act for a game or a cheat or a trainer, whatsoever you want to build. Well, you can actually uh, define a structure, a class, whatsoever the, the way you want to do it. I mean, you can just feed your structure with the pointers and boom, job done. I mean, in this case, I was just updating the player automatically just by sending it uh, the pointers and all the offset to the pointers. So, well, it's pretty much easy to do. So in this case, <laughs> I ended up with something funny. I don't know if you've seen it on TV. Somebody told me about it during the lunch. I was really like, oh no, I should talk about it. It would be so funny. I mean, I was talking about Call of Duty uh, a few years ago. And actually it was pretty funny because I was really like feeling how bad I was feeling about it. 
And actually, this is the act that I made for it, which was like pretty obviously made of C sharp. I don't know if you know how to code C sharp. It's pretty straightforward, aside of C or C plus plus. But I was able like to reverse the full memory easily without knowing anything about uh, how the the game was made or something. It was just easy because everything was in the same block using no protection and memory. Everything was like, just act me. It was written big. I mean, it was almost in the title. So we, we got something like this, which was pretty much not legit, but working. Just tell me why. I was playing online like this. If you like it, well, uh, they just started to patch it on the last one, just to tell you. They don't even care. That was not something expected from them, <laughs> but it was still funny. I mean, nobody was expecting that it would be so easy to be like impossible level within a click of a button. Well, it was possible. So I, I started to get interested about, well, the concept that I was talking about how I could be the hacker sending a payload to the game server, but the server is actually connected to the database. It's connected to the network. It's connected to every player connected to the server. So at this point, I just found out that it was possible to sign, uh, to send like a remote code execution to it. I mean, uh, how bad is it when it's on a web server? I mean, you can take down the server. You can just, you know, make whatever you want from the server. Kind of the same thing for a game. Can I know why there's no like security on the server side? Well, probably, I don't know. Uh, oh, there's nobody working for the gaming industry in the room. <laughs> that would be so funny at the end. Um, well, I ended up finding a way to do some database injection easily. I mean, when you know your profile, you can just search in memory for your name, your level, your XP whatsoever. That's easy to find your profile. I mean, who would, who would talk about the fact that my name could be a SQL injection? Just saying. <laughs> I mean, nobody is taking care about sanitizing on a server side when it's come to a game. I mean, you just want to play the game, just don't care about the fact that it could be vulnerable to, to me. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you know, facts about how I think about gaming in general. I mean, sanitizing is something. There's so many facts that could lead to getting IPs of the other players. Uh, controlling the players remotely is something fun too. I have some story about that and leaking client information and you know all the stuff I already said about it. And you can also pop a shell. I mean, I've seen it live. It's quite, uh, I mean, I was afraid, <laughs> seriously. Normally I'm hacking people and not getting hacked. <laughs> That's not cool. But yeah, so more seriously, I found out something really funny. I mean, GTA 5 was one of the first game that I was able to do pretty much everything I wanted to do. I mean, it was possible for me to call function directly in memory. And those function, uh, well, they were like easy to use enough to send the ID of another player to execute the code directly on the other player's game. I mean, I was able to kick you out of your own car online without any permission. I, I just don't care. I just want to hack you. So... <laughs> It was the same thing for money. I was able like to spawn money on top of the head of my friends and just have fun. And we also find out something interesting about this because uh, the instance of your garage in the game, uh, where when you're uh, in your house, actually, uh, if you spawn money, it spawned in everyone money in the game. So everyone was believing in God and asking the God on the chat to say, hey, I need money. I'm not millionaire enough. <laughs> they were crying. Totally. It was just amazing. <laughs> I was just laughing. But yeah, this is cool. Seriously, that was my, my first success. And actually, that's kind of funny because you can buy these kind of things online for one box. Just saying. That's the kind of act you can buy legit for one box. So yeah, if you really want to mess with GTA, have fun. Um, the next step will be about reverse engineering because we're getting in the state where uh, you need to start looking behind the game. I mean, if you want to control every function, if you want to add feature to your cheat, if you want really to start messing with players. I mean, this is the funny part about it. Uh, I never thought that reverse engineering would be so cool at all. I mean, we really care about learning how to use only DPG. 
I mean, that's an old debugger, but this debugger got like so awesome function. And same thing for IDA. I mean, who's using it for CDF? I mean, you can just raise your hand. I mean, a lot of people in the room, probably. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean. But what's cool about reverse engineering in general? I mean, if you know assembly, there's so many things to do with assembly. Uh, did you already, I mean, how much gamers are in the room right now? Just raise your hand. I'm just wondering. Nice. Uh, did you ever got the feeling that the guys were shooting at you? Yeah, I mean, with a wall between you and the guy? Probably. I already seen some crazy stuff that the guy was shooting at me uh, from the other side of the map. And I was just dying one shot without any cares. And yeah, that's quite logic because the thing is funny with assembly because you can just decide to say, hey, I will shoot a bullet with my gun. I will put a breakpoint on my bullet and say, hey, what's the instruction? What's the feeling about I'm shooting? What's happening with a bullet? Well, simple. The, the bullet is going straight. Uh, and well, there's a lot of execution. And it's all about if. If you know how to reverse if using assembly, you can just put the breakpoint, find like where's the condition, and switch them. I mean, what if I switch every if or if I know them? I mean, nothing happening. So the bullet is just growing through the wall, no more recoil, no more, no more everything. I mean, you're just doing free kills like this. I mean, it's as easy as it is. Just need to learn about reverse engineering. But uh, the next step was even more really interesting. I mean, if you, if you are like a C++ coder or if you learn how to code with it, and if you know about DirectX, that's even more funny because this is a part of almost every game of the market, actually. And I was like able to learn how to just hook like DirectX in memory. I mean, just create a bypass between uh, the assembly and say, hey, just come here. I, I've got like better code than your code and just execute my stuff so I can just play with DirectX on my side and well, go back to your code now. So execute the code of the game so we don't care. And I can just play with it and do whatever I want. That was the main goal of hacking game. So I learned it about how to hook stuff in memory. I, I learned it about code caving for those who know what it is. It's pretty something well, deep that you need to learn if you like to code. Uh, I was going to do a joke about coding naked. But if you're not coding C++, C, you won't probably understand what I mean by that. So it, that's cool. And it was almost the same thing to bypass an anti-cheat protection. So actually, it was leading me to this. It was my first try ever online against player. I mean, if you got a chance to play WarZ, DZ, or whatsoever, the survival game, well, it was so amazing. The feeling of getting killed by somebody trying to survive. Well, well I needed some more whiskey. Um, Well, now I feel like I'm drinking too much. This is probably the, the beginning of the end. I mean, at this point, I was able to draw in my screen without getting detected. I was able to uh, write some text, display images, whatsoever I wanted to do. So I ended up, oh, I ended up being able to just switch uh, the texture from the players. So I was able to see players through the wall. How amazing is it? Seriously, if you're playing online and you like my slides, please raise your hand. I mean, <laughs> that's like a dream come true in any case. So I was really thankful to DirectX because it's free. It's made by Microsoft, once again. So I like them so much. <laughs> so I ended up messing with the game at all, just switching all the texture making sure I will see through everything, uh, being able to do, I mean, everything at this point. So I was like ready for war. Uh, and I just ended up like being so happy playing online. I mean, if you got a chance someday to play a uh, live MMO on computer, 
and you got a feeling that somebody was hacking or something. I mean, this is the case. This is probably the worst game ever because this game was like a live hacking competition. Totally. I mean, if you're not hacking the game, you won't play the game because at the first level, you will find out that the guy is totally hacking you and it's impossible to win. So it was like kind of funny because I was like messing with memory, getting information from everyone, displaying everyone's information right in the screen, uh, being able to do, well, pretty much, that was pretty much it for now. Because the next step was even more interesting. Because I just found out by making my own game, because I'm working on Unreal in China, actually, uh, I just found out that, you know, open source is really, really cool. I mean, I never know, I never known what it was meaning before to understand that uh, this kind of engine were open for research. I mean, there's no bug bounty for it. There's no way to say, hey, I found an exploit. Well, who would care about it? Seriously. So, um, I don't know. So I just decided to go further, research more, learn about uh, how to make a signature out of function and memory to be able to trace back everything, bypass um, LSLR, if you know what it is. Um, I mean, at this point, I was like totally able to do whatever I want with the game running on my computer. The goal was to do anything with the computer of everyone running the game. That's even more interesting, right? So, well, I just started to build uh, an automatic way to do it. So I did my own framework using C++. And well, it was able for me to just instantiate a class to act a game. I mean, it was easy as it is. So at the end, I just found out that uh, some guys a few years ago did a talk at Black Hat that probably nobody really cared about it because I never heard anything about this. And I just found out that Unreal Engine was well, vulnerable for remote code execution. How cool is it? Seriously. <laughs> I mean, uh, a lot of people won't notice, but what I mean, it's not only Unreal Engine. Uh, I mean, every game from this engine are vulnerable to it. I could do a list. Would take the w I mean, the wall would be full of name of the game that were vulnerable for it. So... I don't know if you really wanted to see the list, but was interesting. And the source engine from the guys uh, doing Steam. I mean, Steam is pretty big. I, I personally got like 500 games on my Steam account. And I mean, I wouldn't expect this. I mean, everyone was able to upload files and, well, probably more than that. I mean, this is just the thing that the guys were talking about during the talk. So I just got those lines. So was like, yeah, that would be cool that people would know about it because it's kind of something that goes under the carpet. I mean, nobody talks about it anymore and it's still interesting. So after getting like the interesting part of attacking the engine directly, I found out by playing Counter-Strike, which is one of the most amazing shooters on computers, that, you know, there's secrets inside the engine that are pretty interesting because you can actually, without hacking anything, uh, it's just a bool in memory that you can reach out using a simple addresses, which is static, if you know what I mean. You don't need to bypass anything. You just access the address every time you run the game. Well, job done. You can just turn it on, and well, you can see through a wall the players that don't have any more uh, texture anymore. You can just, you know, hack the game for fun. And also discovered that it was easy to use DirectX to build form from Microsoft inside the game. How oh, interesting. <laughs> Microsoft Inception. <laughs> for, for, from this point, I was pretty funny because, I mean, hacking Microsoft was some kind of, you know, not really hacking, it was more researching about how I could build my own stuff, build my own game, my own version. So I ended up finding some more interesting things. Like after doing my own act for Counter-Strike, 
uh, having my own features because I was like able to embot everyone. Uh, well, same thing to draw the players' box on the wall, the distance, and get all the information whatsoever I wanted to do was pretty straightforward because I was already doing game my, by myself. So I, I know all the techniques to calculate the distance and all the stuff. So I just decided to, you know, do an apps for it. So pretty cool. Part of the framework. So at this point, I just found out, like the texture, I was able to draw the skeleton of the players. So oh, amazing again to be able to act game with a single bull static in memory. I mean, once again, it's something that probably nobody ever heard about it. It's stuck in the engine. There's nothing to do. You can all, you can like just access the console if you want to activate it manually. And well, normally it's, it should be on server side. The server should have the right to play with this, but actually you can just do it if you want to do it. So at this stage, well, it's time to drink some booze. <laughs> I mean, I was just winning games. In this case, well, it's a bit fake because I was playing against bot. So, you know, the bot were pretty easy to kill. But, well, still, I was able, like, with one bullet to do, like, three headshot easy. And it was kind of victory for me. <laughs> so I decided to say, yeah, that would be interesting for talk talk about it and share the information because I'm really personally wondering about... Um, how it could be possible to block uh, those things. I mean, I'm really like pissed by myself about gaming industry. I mean, nobody is caring about security and they're even caring less about how it could get hacked this way. So it's like, well, I just personally stopped play games because I was finding like too insecure. <laughs> so this is the thing I was having to say about it. And that's why I decided to make a talk about it because nobody like ever notice about how interesting it could be to say yeah the game is dangerous <laughs> so uh i guess thanks you everyone uh if you have any question about it and if you want to know more about what i did how it could be possible all the limit because i was like expecting to talk about more stuff but it would have been like a workshop and a workshop would have been like really long so i just decided to go quick uh, make it easy for everyone to reach me out. And, uh, well, last thing to say about hacking a game is, well, personally, don't do it if you don't have money to buy the game again. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> I did it so many times that I was like, oh, I spent like 300 bucks on this game playing online. And I just decided to hack it for fun and profit. So <laughs> I just screwed up everything. So that was, that was not really interesting. Just don't do it at all. Just Take care about, you know, reading before to do it. And actually, I found out something interesting. I don't know if no Starch Press is there today. But um, this summer, I found out at DEF CON that uh, they were selling a book about game hacking. And this book, if you want to do it and if you want to get into it and learn how it works, how it could be possible uh, to hack any game and, well, to dig, like, to get a bounty. because I, I hope that in the future, uh, the guys from gaming industry will start doing Bundy about how I could act their servers or how I could act their games because actually there's nobody caring about it. And well, I don't know, just raise your hand if you're pissed about hackers in game. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know. I know. Just drink booze, stop playing and buy more booze. <laughs> that will do the job. I mean, yeah, this guy understands me. <laughs> pretty well so yeah so this is it thank you for listening